Um, okay, I'll talk a bit about installing Keras. So some of you might have, been, might have used Keras without really understanding how to actually get it sort of set up. Um, so if you've got control of, of your own machine, you could use something like Vagrant uh, and, and VirtualBox to get up and running. So if you've got these, these guys installed, clone the repository and type in Vagrant Run, uh, go, um, go grab a coffee, and when you get back, you've got to run an installation of Kairos. Um, a lot of people you, you use use Docker. If you're using the live demo, so demo.caris.org, you're actually using the sort of Docker, the, the Docker containers. Um, they are pretty stable. Uh, just to put it in context, I will probably, so the doc containers run on AWS and I probably log into the instance every few months just to sort of pack, to, to actually patch the machine. And, and think I was thinking about it before this talk. If I updated some of the automation scripts I've got to actually update that, I probably would need to log in. So it literally looks after itself. Um, if if we get performance issues, we just ramp up the memory and, and just leave it. So if this is, if you want to run, um, if you want to run the Docker's on your own cloud environment, have a look at the Docker files um, on the GitHub, GitHub repository. I think some of the scripts we use, the starting, stopping, backing things up might be around, but if you're desperate for them, give me a shout and I can see what I can, what I can sort of dig up. Um, you can install Keras directly from source if you so wish. It's actually it's actually pretty easy. There is actually a one one as a one line command that you can run, which will literally download a quick install script, clone everything, add add a few helper scripts, uh, and that's it. But for more info, have a look at the documentation. Um, if you are saving stuff on Keras um, or loading stuff in Keras, you're really going to be exporting and importing Keras models. And all Keras models fundamentally are, are just XML files. So they were designed to be syntactically. Uh, so the reason we chose XML was so we can do a bit of syntactic and semantic validation before we loaded stuff into Keras. When the model is on Keras, it actually sits in a very highly normalized database. So the order in which stuff gets into the Keras database is, is very, very, is very, very um, specific. Um, you you sometimes get these doc carries files. All they really are are just zip files with images that you might have uploaded. And if you're working with architectural patterns, they might include other composite composite models as well. Um, if you really know what you're doing, and I have known people that have done this, you can work with Keras by just hacking the XML files and just uploading to sort of see the models and just work just in the XML files. But I wouldn't recommend doing that because you'll be surprised how many dependencies you are, and you may get odd errors when you, when you try and import things. 